when I decided to come up with this business for small business tutoring, I actually was touring UT. Mm. I was touring UT. I came to UT. I had the best grilled cheese of my life for some reason. So fire. And I remember I'm laying in my hotel room with my mom and I was like, mom, I think I'm going to start a tutoring business. And she was like, you need to stop coming up with ideas. Okay. None of these are good right now, please. And I just remember saying, you know, ma, just think about it. I could be working less hours, right? This is my senior year of high school. Mm -hmm. I could be working less hours at this grocery store where I'm miserable versus contributing my, to my community, raising my education, getting job experience, and working for a pay that I properly deserve. Back in the incubator with another bonus episode in this incubator series here on That Entrepreneur Show. Vincent A. Lancey here. I'm excited to host another bonus episode with my friend Gabby. She's crushing it in a business completely different than any of the other companies that I brought on today. Uh, this season, excuse me. But Gabby, <laughs> thank you so much for taking the time to come on. Thank you so much for having me. I'm it's excited awesome. for everyone else to learn about what she's doing because we have our meetings here where we have our speakers come in or our workshops and we get to hear a little bit about each other's businesses. Her business is something that I am definitely not an expert in, know nothing about, which is a great example for everyone out there that we can always be learning, always be career learners. I'm going to open it up to you, Gab. Okay. Tell us a little bit about your business. Okay. Um, so I'm the founder of Coloranti. We are a color-based cybersecurity startup. So we combine the power of color, biology, biology. We're both stumbling. <laughs> <laughs> and then traditional encryption methods. And we mix it up in our little, kind of like a little Rubik's Cube design. Think of that color mixing up constantly um, in our rotational algorithm. It goes around 24 seven. And we produce pretty much meaningless blocks of color to the visual human eye. And it's actually people's most sensitive information, passwords, small details of that nature, hidden in meaningless blocks of color. So those little cubes, things like little cubes lined up in front of you, there's no labels on them, right? There's right. no plain text, there's no numbers. So how do you really know what it says, right? So we're using the advantages of the idea of hiding something in plain sight to protect your most sensitive information versus creating this big security tower that screams like something sensitive is here, right? We'd rather hide you in plain sight than create a big opportunity for you to look like this, I don't know the word, this big beacon of opportunity from a hacker's perspective, I guess. So that's where we are, we're in development. Well, someone who's a, a noob to this world, yes, right? Yes, super scary words. Where does, um, like how does all this work? Color, like hiding in plain sight, like yeah. explain that a little bit to me. So using the color in plain sight um, method, I want to break this down. My team is always on me because they're like, you're such a high level thinker and you need to drop it down for the simple people. And I'm like, mm. <laughs> um, how do I explain this in a way that is a little bit easier? In terms of the hiding it in plain sight piece, hmm, I'm struggling. You might have to pause me because I'm nervous. No, I'll, I'll cut it out. Um, when it comes to hiding the color in plain sight, what we really bank on is the human interaction that comes with it. So fundamentally, since we're a little like toddler, infant level, we can understand color, right? Mm -hmm. We interact with color. So a computer being the high level concept that it is, polar opposite to simple humans can also understand color. So we chose a modality in the situation, different shades of color, anything. If you go to Home Depot and you play with a paint wall, we're using all the colors in the rainbow right. as the modality between human interactions and technological interactions. The reason why we chose to use the plain sight concept mm -hmm. is because color can blend into anything. It can move between anything. Your sensitive information can't do that, right? So having color as the modality in terms of movement and having your information that needs to be protected, it creates a parallel in the movement. So you can move two things at the same time where one acts as the cover and one acts as the real. And it's a significantly easier opportunity in terms of protecting people's information because unfortunately, consumers in the cyber world don't have a clue in the world what's going on. So it's better to have an informed consumer only, even if they only have a little bit of information, but they're part of taking the action and solving the problem rather than a consumer that has no idea what's going on and they're adding to the problem, unfortunately. I love this. So now I want to piggyback after, now we understand what sure. you got going on. Mm -hmm. Who is your target customer? Yeah. So our target customer is probably on that large enterprise, military intelligence, pretty specific people. This is more of a indirect 
for B2B customers sort of thing. We don't want this to be the sort of product that everybody jumps on and is confused. Mm -hmm. We want to be that indirect background player. So in terms of our endpoint user, our regular Joe Schmo consumer interaction, if you're thinking two-factor authentication, if you're thinking, I have to type in a one-time code password, right? We want to keep the idea of there's a consumer interaction. We want to make it simpler. In our design with our two-factor authentication, instead of having a one-time code password and you're like, I gotta look at my phone and I gotta look at my laptop and right? I'm stressed out. I hate that. It's so annoying, yeah. right? With our consumer design, the piece of the algorithm, so to speak, that you would interact with as a regular Joe Schmo, we have three colors on the lineup. One of them is your favorite color. You tap the button, you type in your username and password, that's it. So that. much easier, right? You know your username, you, excuse me, you know your favorite color since you're like six. Like if you're red, you've been locked in all red yeah, since you yeah. were seven, yeah. you know? So that's so much easier to play into your biology and what is fundamental to you than to force you to adapt to the technology. Right? Now, this may be a silly question, but do you have like every color on the color wheel as options or is it like red, blue, yellow? Every color on the color wheel, that Home Depot paint wall, she's the inspo, okay? <laughs> we got it all and if there's not a color you like, you can make one up. This is so inspiring. I just think that you're solving a need. We just talked about the one-time passwords. I know I'm not alone in hating it. And again, like you said, scrambling, not having your phone anywhere, that is a regular thing. I think our audience would definitely be interested in learning. Yeah. What was the inspiration for coming up with this idea? Or like what led you to cyber in general? In terms of the idea, I am absolutely, have always been a creative kid. When I was like seven, I was painting the basement with teal. Basement floor, it's me painting, going nuts. My Caribbean father is like, what are you doing? Okay, <laughs> so I have always loved the power of creativity and the power of color. As I grew older, I realized I loved high level concept, you know, things that give me a challenge and the things that, you know, up the heartbeat, give you a little race. Um, and when I stumbled onto UT, I learned about cybersecurity and I was like, this looks hard. I don't want any, no, 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 don't even give me near that, you know? Yeah. But there's only so many times you can watch your boomer parents struggle to make a purchase online, okay? I can only have my blood pressure raised <laughs> so many times. And I think it was my junior year of college here at UT I just kept going back to the power of color and the power of all these different things around us because you're starting to see this major social media boom with TikTok and Instagram and it was COVID and everyone's being creative and there was such a major flow. And I was like, I wanna get on the flow, right? This looks fun. And I just remember thinking of little seven-year-old me painting the basement and loving the power that came with being creative and being colorful. Um, coming from a mixed race background where everything is different, you know, we're always in the blend. I was like, I love the blend why can't I incorporate the blend into something high level concept, right? Those are my two strongest strengths, so to speak. Why can't I combine them? And then I stumbled in to the cybersecurity section. I was like, all right, like, this is kind of fun. I'm having a blast. And from there, we just combined. You know, my parents, I'm sick of them struggling to make a purchase on Walmart. I can only deal with that so many times, okay? And so funny. I just got sick of it. I got sick of watching the people I cared about struggle. And I knew that at the core of every human being, there was a level of simplicity, mm -hmm. right? So why couldn't I take something that was so simple for everyone else and so high level and combine them if we already had something in common, right? So I just kind of took one, took two, combined together, made three. I mean, truly inspirational. <laughs> you leaned into so many areas that were important to you and I think that could be great advice for everyone out there. If you are a entrepreneur out there on that cusp of taking the leap, Great example, follow your passions. I think everyone here in the incubator program is doing that. And Definitely. that's what we always get to learn from each other. Like I've learned so much here, but you mentioned you've always been a creative. Yeah. So does that mean you always wanted to be an entrepreneur or? Oh my gosh, yeah. So I have been that little pain in the butt for my parents since I was a kid, always a creative, always the outspoken one, always the one with authority issues, 100%. Not in a bad way, always respectful of my elders and my teachers, but always that one kid asking why. Why can't we do more? Why can't I be creative? What do you mean teal doesn't look good on the basement floor? I'm yeah. not thrilled with that answer, <laughs> you know, things of that nature. But in terms of entrepreneurial ventures, I actually started my first business when I was 17. All right, we're gonna and have to learn about it. <laughs> so I was 17. Um, I decided to open my first tutoring business in my super small farm town of Drake, Massachusetts. If you're from Mass, you know, you might know where Drake is on the low line. And it's me and my farm town of like maybe, I don't know, 20,000 people. It's me and the cows, you know? Mm -hmm. And I remember being that small kid struggling in math. 
getting eaten up, you know, being told you're not good at this, you're going to this lower level class or this upper level class, people gave up on you, right? And it's so crazy And because when I decided to come up with this business for small business tutoring, I actually was touring UT. Mm. I was touring UT, I came to UT, I had the best grilled cheese in my life for some reason, so fire. And I remember I'm laying in my hotel room with my mom and I was like, mom, I think I'm gonna start a tutoring business. And she was like, you need to stop coming up with ideas, okay? None of these are good right now, please. And I just remember saying, you know, Ma, just think about it. I could be working less hours, right? This is my senior year of high school. Mm -hmm. I could be working less hours at this grocery store where I'm miserable versus contributing my, to my community, raising my education, getting job experience, and working for a pay that I properly deserve, mm -hmm. right? So then I go from making nine, ten dollars in the grocery store, X amount of hours, miserable, to working less than 10 hours a week, over $20 an hour at 17 years old. Mm -hmm. When I shifted my mindset of, I wanna be treated as a human first, it completely redirected my entire perspective on the job world and working, and I just realized entrepreneurship is the way I had to go. Would teaching or tutoring be what you would be doing if you weren't in the role you're in right now? I actually still teach and tutor on the side. I, I love, love my kids. I go hard for my kids. Like they are my, I always call them my little green beans. Um, I love my green beans. Um, there's a couple families that I'm still in contact with. One of them actually just texted me because their son is looking at colleges. Like Amazing. it's crazy the relationships that you build because I think having that initial venture and having such a human focused approach to the job search and development shaped me now as a lead entrepreneur with my team, with my advisors, with our interns. We do everything human focused. There is no decision that's made on this team that does not focus on what are your needs first, right? So with my team, if we have a bad day or something's going wrong, I always tell them, you're not feeling well, you're having a bad mental health day, you're human first. Yeah. Do not come on to this team, do not show up to this meeting if you are not in the place to give 100% as a human version of yourself before you give me the professional. The professional is of no use to me if the human can't function. That's very good advice, everyone out there. Please take that as one of the many takeaways today. What age do you like tutoring most? Like, or oh my God. <laughs> do you only teach a so certain age? So I actually, my specialty is special needs. So special needs, yes, learning would. disability, ESL. I teach in K through 12 and I also do um, Special needs, my favorite was actually K through 12 kids, they're a wild unit. Um, I, I do both <laughs> subbing and I stick to elementary school because yes. they're usually yes. not taller than me yet. That's, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, the that's when they get rowdy. They get rowdy. So oh, yeah. K through 12, um, and then special needs in that location. I've done some work in Autism and Downs, done some special needs preschool. That was my favorite. That was my Very favorite feeling, I'm sure. Oh my gosh, there is nothing compared to the love and appreciation of a child that just wants to be seen you know that just wants to be validated and the fact that you take the time out to sit with them and make yeah. them feel like a human is just it, it's an incredible feeling see an idea just popped uh harry who's got the lacrosse yeah. coffee company you might have a good fit to tutor the kids yeah. that he sends to we'll plug harry again <laughs> earlier episode on the incubator series helps high school Athletes, college, yeah. lacrosse, get ready for college lacrosse and everything mm -hmm. tutoring. That might be a good fits. But so far today, we've learned why she became an entrepreneur, all about her unique business. If you are one of these large enterprise corporations, this could be a great solution for you. Before I find out your contact info, <laughs> where we could find you out online, if you could have a conversation, Gabby, with any entrepreneur, dead or alive, Ooh. who would you choose? Oh, my gosh. This person that I want to meet twice is actually a personal mentor of mine, and I adore this person. They give the best advice. It is so robust. It is so considerate. It is so kind, but it's also, it's real. It's critical. And every single time I have a conversation with this person, I feel like I am leaving knowing more and I'm leading in a stronger way for my team. So the person I would have, I would like to have lunch with, if you're seeing this, please, I'll call you back, I'm sorry. Um, Benson Reisman, I love this man. One of my most dear personal mentors that I've ever had. Every time I have a conversation with Benson, it's just one of those people that you just feel inspired by, that you just feel so acknowledged. He's gonna tear you up, he's gonna serve you. Mm -hmm. As he says, the good, the bad, and the ugly. But I love the experience every single time because it's just, it's truly inspiring. His story is fantastic and his mentorship is even better. Is there a golden nugget or a piece of advice that stands out from him from all your meetings? Something that he's 
inspire you to do maybe that we can extend to our audience? Benson will always sign his emails with enjoy in all caps. And when we first started connecting and a little bit of mentoring, I would be like, what am I enjoying? I'm getting yelled at. I'm getting yelled at every two seconds. What do you want? <laughs> what is fun in this process? And now that we've actually made some development, our software is actually in our first alpha build. I'm seeing what he means when he says enjoy, because it wasn't about enjoy just the fun parts or enjoy what you can potentially capital raise. It's about enjoy the good, the bad, and the ugly parts of every experience, every team interaction. You know, when my team and I have design days, sometimes they're 16 hours. We're straight through together, locked in a little room. It's enjoying the moments of laughter. It's enjoying the moments of building. You know, it's enjoying the human experience of the up and the down and the in and out and the twist like a roller coaster. So and that's, that's my nugget. I love it. It's definitely a nugget everyone has to accept in entrepreneurship or entrepreneurship will eat you up and spit you out. There are a lot more bad and challenging moments than the few shiny moments that get publicized. And as she mentioned, 16 hours dedicated, not moving until she figures it out. That is what it takes to really be an entrepreneur sometimes. Deb, I really want to thank you for coming on the show. Thank you so much Where for having me. Where can we find you online, website, social, LinkedIn? We are on LinkedIn at Coloranti, C-O-L-O-R-A-N-T. And then there's an apostrophe on the I or an accent mark. Sorry, not an apostrophe. Special little accent mark on the I. You and I are friends on LinkedIn. So if you need to find me, you can go through him. Yep. Um, and then my name on LinkedIn is Gabrielle Brown. So sorry, I keep smacking into you. G-A-B-R-I-E-L-L-E. -L -L -E, and then Brown like the color. Um, and members of my team are also linked on there we are always quoting posts of each other and being supportive always reach out i'm a super in person super friendly person stop for coffee stop to say hi i'm always down for a little chat thank you for sharing that everyone we are at the Lowe center if you come finding yourself in the tampa area the show is at that entrepreneur show on all social media and be sure to head to vincent a lancy on youtube and subscribe to me there for more video clips and episodes like today's show if you're interested in joining the show as a show partner or want to learn more about book and podcast coaching that I provide, reach out to Danica at podcastsbylancy at gmail.com. And with that, we are signing off today here, both of us in the Loath Center. Abby, thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. This is awesome. <laughs> you crushed it. <laughs>